Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to replace the engine oil and oil filter on a Volvo 2.5 liter straight 5 cylinder turboed engine. This car I am working with here today is a 2007 C30 T5, but the same engine is also used on the S40, V50 and C70 Volvo models, as well as some Ford models. A similar procedure can most likely be applied to other Volvo models too. Ensure the vehicle has come up to full operating temperature and then elevate the front. You can either use drive on ramps like I have or safely jack up the front of the vehicle. Volvo recommends an oil change replacement at 12,000 kilometers or 7,500 miles or it should be done at least once a year if that mileage isn't met. You will also have a warning light on your gauge cluster stating maintenance is required in the display area along with an orange warning light. Start by removing the belly pan which is held on with 7 T30 Torx screws. It is best to start with the rear first and slowly move your way to the front. This is actually supposed to be clipped onto the subframe by the control arms but someone installed a cable tie instead. You'll see towards the end of the video, once I reinstall the belly pan, how it clips into place properly. Here's the location of the torque screws. Now the two areas where it clips onto the subframe. Using a 17mm socket, remove the oil drain plug. Have the pan directly below the drain plug, and once you get to the end of the threads, pull the plug away quickly, so you can minimize the amount of oil on your hand. Be careful as well because the oil is hot from the engine. This should be done when the oil is hot as it improves the oil flow and allows it to drain better. As you can see when it's draining it isn't getting air so either crack the oil cap or remove the dipstick slightly. Now to gain access to the oil filter to remove it. First we need to remove the air duct off the radiator support. This uses two 8mm bolts one on each side. Once those two bolts have been removed, then pop up the duct. It clips on both the radiator support side and going down below to the air box. Now remove the lower portion of the air duct, which feeds the air box. This is clipped in as well. For this car, the oil dipstick was seized. If you are running into the same issue, I do have a video on how to remove a seized dipstick without breaking it, so be sure to check it out. To remove the filter cartridge cap, this requires a 36 millimeter socket. Unfortunately, I didn't have one of those on hand, so I used an adjustable wrench instead. It's an extremely tight fit. In a pinch, this will work when going from the alternator side. You can order a special socket online. I do have one on order. I'm just waiting for it to arrive. Remove the cap. The filter cartridge will be inside. Remove that as well. Be sure to have a rag handy in case of any oil drips. Compare the old and new filters to ensure they are the same. For the filter cap housing, the new filter should come with a new o-ring. Remove the old o-ring using a pick or small standard screwdriver. Install the new o-ring and ensure it's properly seated. Also apply a light layer of oil so it doesn't bind when screwing on the cap. Just to give you a peek inside the filter housing before installing the filter. Install the new filter cartridge. Now install the filter cap. The torque spec for the cap is printed on the top, but if you're unsure, it's 18 foot pounds or 25 newton meters. Reinstall the duct. First starting with the lower portion. It just snaps into place. Then install the upper portion, which also snaps into place first. And then install the bolts. Clean the mounting surface on the oil pan for the drain plug. You should also inspect the drain plug gasket for any damage and replace if necessary. You can also apply a small amount of oil to the drain plug gasket to help with lubrication when tightening. The torque spec for the drain plug is 25 foot pounds or 35 newton meters. Replenish the engine with oil. The owner's manual does outline which oil weight is best and types of oil required for your engine. I am using a synthetic and have already ran an engine flush as the previous owner wasn't sure if they used synthetic oil. I do have a video on how to perform an engine flush too, so be sure to check that out. Check the oil level of your engine. You should have between the minimum and maximum lines. Typically, I like to keep it closer to the maximum line. 
Start the engine and check for any leaks. Reinstall the belly pan. If you saw originally the belly pan had a zip tie installed and that isn't needed if it's clipped into place correctly. The belly pan clips onto the subframe first. It does have tabs for this. Then reinstall the fasteners first to hold it into place and then finalize everything so it lines up correctly. Remove the vehicle off the ramps, turn off the engine, and allow it to sit for a minute and check the oil again. A finalized oil level check should be done when the vehicle is on level ground. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me. And if you're not a subscriber, also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.